Good morning class, this is a Banksia seed pod and this shows the relationship between plants and fire and is the basis of my talk today. You look outside, spring is in the air, the grass is green, but you notice there's a fire. How can that be? You might be so concerned you call the authorities or triple zero for help. But the likely scenario is that nationally accredited and qualified staff from the National Parks and Wildlife Service are doing a prescribed burn. We want to reduce the impact of bushfires on communities. Undertaking prescribed burns in strategic locations is really important. Prescribed burning helps reduce the number, spread and impact of large intense bushfires and can also improve biodiversity. See this stuff here? This is what you call bushfire fuel. It's great for our fire tonight, but not so great if we're trying to protect this place from a major bushfire. Reducing bushfire fuel through prescribed burning can be the difference between 2 metre flames and 50 metre flames on days of heightened fire danger. Or in other words, a fire that we can work on, or where the only option is to retreat back to a safe distance and protect assets where possible. There's a huge amount of planning and assessment to be done before an area is even considered for burning. We have to make sure we're considering all angles and looking at the big picture. What plants and animals live there? How will they respond to fire at different times of their life cycle? And do parts of the habitat need protecting, like large trees with hollows that provide shelter to birds and mammals? That's why we have an environmental assessment process built into our planning. We need to consider environmental values through the whole process and then we can change our plans if needed. Our process involves knowledge and experience. Lots of people's knowledge and experience contributes to making sure as much information as possible is gained about the site we are burning. Our Fire Information Management System, FIMS, searches different databases for records of threatened species that may be at risk from fire. Ecological Fire Management Strategies, Specific strategies are prepared for species that either require fire or are sensitive to fire. Site visits and surveys. Site surveys are carried out before each burn to record which plant species occur in the area and to identify any potential habitat for threatened wildlife. We won't burn an area if it's the last refuge for a threatened species or if there isn't enough bushland for them to live in while the burnt area grows back. It's also important to consider how much weed control is required after a burn to help the bush recover. We also wash our trucks and equipment so we don't spread weeds or sawborne diseases. Fire history is also important to consider. We need to make sure there is the right amount of fire in the landscape to reduce risk but also to ensure native species have the habitat they need. Too much fire, or too little, may affect native plants and animals. Aboriginal cultural sites and other heritage areas are also identified as part of the assessment process, and if they need protection measures, these are put in place. As they go through this process, they may decide to go through with this, actually no, go to proceed with the burn and postpone it or cancel it altogether. Or they may decide to build in actions to reduce any negative impacts. Did you get that? As fire managers, we play the long game. We continuously plan, assess and monitor what we do so that we can minimise the risks and maximise the benefits. This way, we can get the best results to not only reduce bushfire risk to communities, but to also preserve and enhance biodiversity. 
So next time you see smoke on a cool spring day, think of this Spanxia seed pod as proof that fire can bring new life. And if done right, is good for our environment. Any questions?